today's project. The original solar panels I mounted up here by just using adhesive to glue these L-channel aluminum pieces to the fiberglass roof material, roof panels. But I used Sikaflex adhesive, which is basically never coming off. So now I need to get that off. Okay, so this is the rail I need to take off. Uh, two of them, one on each side. And that adhesive is super strong. So I've sharpened the face of an Ulfa knife. If you get the picture, this is gonna take a while. I thought also a uh, filleting knife may have the pushy in power I need. skinned off the roof on both sides. Went through about six of the heavy Ulfa blades, but not a big deal. And then I've got uh, the two pieces up here so far, the two frames and one of the solar panels tested on the, make sure it clears. Um, this surface here is 316th lower than this, and then higher yet are the rivets. So I wanted to make sure that clears, and it does. Um, and that's without any uh, adhesive sickle underneath here. So there will be a little more gap on top of that yet. Okay, this is as far as I got yesterday. Please excuse the wind noise. It's the best production quality I can do while standing on a spare tire on the back of the truck. So, as some of you may know from the first video, the four lower panels are sliding on these stainless steel 100 pound rated slides. I've left this uh, eighth panel off to access the rest of the cabling that I need to deal with today. And uh, these are the connectors I used on the panels. They're 60 amp rated, uh, gold plated, solid brass, I think, on the inside. But they're solid and they've got a real nice positive connection. And then uh, just for added protection, I'm going to put silicone grease inside each of the connectors. And over top of that, a clear piece of shrink tube just to keep the worst of the gribblies off of it and I just keep it from wiggling itself loose if that's even a possibility. For the wires they all they all uh, join here. All the 10 gauge wires all merge down into a 4 gauge welding cable and pink is the upper four panels and blue is the lower four, and then I'm going to use the, the chassis as ground, saving some runs of cable. But. Got the big cable run through grommets. Use those connectors with the clear shrink tube over it. They're not really needed for sealing, but they keep these connections, which have no positive retainer, keep them from popping off. Oh, 
Good morning. We're out camping this weekend to finish the rest of the solar install. Uh, where we live, the truck is a space behind the garage, right next to the back alley where we store it. But that alleyway is a major thoroughfare for vehicle traffic, and it's not really safe to be climbing a ladder there. And we live right next to an airport, so I can't fly the drone and get any decent video there either. So we've brought the truck camping with all the rest of the tools and supplies that I need, hopefully. So let's get up there, finish the last of the install. So let's get right into it. Welcome to the rooftop, gentlemen. As you can see, I have seven of the eight panels installed. I got a lot of this done at home. For those who didn't see the last video, the panels are all fastened to these aluminum brackets that I welded up, and they house the stainless steel slides as well as the stainless steel pneumatic cylinders that operate this whole contraption. And this eighth one is left off because this is the best place to access all of the cabling and the airlines. So I'll get that finished up here and then give you a tour of it all installed. Okay, let's power it up. Okay, inside now I just have a quick test strip that uh, controls the solenoids. And just like that we got two sets of panels. And then to retract. So this is the uh, interface we use to monitor our batteries. As you can see we're down to 60% having cooked and run all kinds of electric uh, accessories this morning and with the solar panels deployed now getting 110 amps at 12 volts which is kind of ridiculous I'm not sure why uh, this panel is only getting 20 amps and this one's getting 90 also 90 is quite a bit higher than uh, that controller is rated for on that input So this is our uh, solar battery management system and it's responsible for taking the uh, current from the solar panels and putting it into our lithium batteries as well as uh, monitoring the state of each cell and uh, doing all of its magic. And this is the controller that I probably blew up. Um, but I wanted to show this design. It's pretty brilliant, all made from layered PCBs, I'll show you here in a second, and the main PCB that handles all the power has uh, aluminum plate bonded to it, and the PCB is printed on aluminum plate, so I thought that was pretty neat. And the really clever thing about this is, it's a stacked, layered design where all the layers are printed circuit boards. The buttons here, for example, are capacitive touch, and that's just a copper layer with traces that go to the next layer, and so on and so on. Can't really do this one-handed. But uh, anyway, this is also open source hardware, and so I emailed the fellow who designed it, and he said that my uh, voltage amplifier... So this little eight-legged part there is the part that's suspect to be failed. I'm going to take this with me to work tomorrow and use our microscope and reflow station and solder in a new one.
Okay, moment of truth. PV1 still works. PV2, 3.5 amps. Which is minuscule, but it is the evening of a very dreary, rainy day. Okay, this is how the test should have gone on the weekend. This is the interface we use to monitor our battery and the loads and so on. As you can see here, PV1 is the top layer of panels, is only making 2.2 amps here in the evening, but the bottom row is zero. PV2 is zero amps because it's retracted at the moment. So if I switch to the script that runs that, and then update the And when I refresh this display, you can see in this graph here, the output has doubled. And it does have two separate inputs, one for the, for the top panels and one for the bottom panels.